Hi today, uh, intro video for a big upcoming teardown. We have here a quite uh, giant uh, LaserJet Pro 400 color laser printer. So I got it from work because it is broken. It could be repaired but it is not uh, economically interesting because it is a 2012 model and it did already print a lot of pages. So it is an insanely heavy beast. This thing is 21 kilos without the toner cartridges. So it is quite amazing. We have a regular paper tray here which maybe will end on eBay if uh, someone needs it. It is uh, worth uh, 30 euros new as replacement part but somebody who would be happy to, happy to get this. Uh, in the front here it is where lies the four cartridges. So yellow, magenta, cyan and black. As always with HP the cartridge will include the, uh, the drum. As you can see it is the one uh, drawer unit. In fact that can be removed and it leaves a big empty spot inside the printer and here at the bottom is the actual problem of the printer but we will see it better later so we have on the side the side panel with vent holes on the cover for uh, optional memory which was not fitted here. The back is pretty uh, beefy as you can see. We have here a big back cover. We have a mains plug uh, USB on network of course. So this unit. Uh, I guess the oven is uh, here somewhere. We have here a whole pile of stuff in this area and including a fan. There is a fan located in this cover which is not uh, really usual. So, yeah, yes, like so we will be able to have a look at it just after this. So and we will have a better look at the problem. This is the uh, toner transfer belt. It is a plastic belt responsible for picking up, I guess, the toner from the drums and putting it on the paper. And for some reason, it did tear in half. It is completely ruined. We will have fun at uh, powering the printer with this and see what happens. And the last side has nothing. And uh, oddly enough, there is no screw. Uh, allowing to easily remove this panel so it looks like it is the last part to come off when you undo the printer ok we will zoom on this area so as you can see it is pretty bad the wall of thing did tear and here is the paper guide piece which you can open to remove paper jams and here you can see the fan at the bottom. Only this screw, this cover already has a number of screws. And there is quite a lot of stuff in here. So first we will power on the printer and I will disable the interlock here. So we will see what it does with this stuff. It should be quite fun. Let me see if I can grab a cable real quick. Yes, it is just long enough. So the power button is on the front here somewhere. I will disable the interlock. And we power on. So oddly enough, it will only complain about the missing toner cartridges. It will not complain about this uh, mess in here. As you can see, it is pretty sad. So it is mostly all what it does in fact. 
after this it does a cycle and uh, nothing else okay so we will see the initialization process on the control panel If I can turn it off. Okay, I believe you will have a good view at the LCD panel here. So by the way, this uh, user interface here is really a pain. Because if you want to set the IP or something like this, you have to go in the menus, in menus, submenus, and really it was not uh, convenient. The only good thing is that it is uh, when it is networked, it will display your IP address. And it will display also the level of uh, toners. So, oh, maybe it will work better if I plug the power. But my cable is too short, of course. Excuse me, one second. I have to change a uh, wall socket. This side. And this. Um, okay. So, what do we get? Power. So it says uh, you let pack car with little arrows filling. Makes the angry noise. Fills the arrows. Said ready for one second and now it says install supplies because of course we have not any cartridge. So I wonder what could happen if I uh, install supplies. But the, sadly the card drills were already sent to the recycling so I cannot uh, do it. And I will surely not buy four new cartridges for one scrap printer. Okay, now we will have a better look at the front uh, insides. Okay, so about this uh, drawer for the toner cartridges when you pull it you really have a feeling it wants to come but it will not come and I had to search a little bit with a lamp and I finally found the hidden latch it is here on the right but you have to access it from the outside of the drawer and it is really not easy because you have to pull the plastic piece like so and now we can remove this drawer and it will probably never go in again so it is just a glass fiber uh, reinforced plastic piece with a sliding uh, rails on the side and also a spring to make uh, contacts for the toner cartridges as you can see so it comes in the, make contacts in the left uh, side here. And now we can have a good look at the problem in this uh, unit. Because as you can see, if I zoom in, on this side we have uh, remains of a toner transfer belt. And on this side we have a missing part of the toner transfer belt. So in fact it looks it is a whole unit you can replace probably by removing two screws here but I did try this and there is a stupid wire loom in the way and you cannot completely uh, remove the thing so it is uh, quite complicated to do it seems you have to disconnect the wire somewhere but if you have to remove the left panel it is a pain because to remove the left panel you have to remove the top panel to remove the top panel you have to undo things at the back well it is not great um, yes on all at the bottom in fact you can see the detail of the damage I will power it again for you with disabling the interlock which is here just at the top here So you should consider the door is closed. We 
and he's turning and doing stuff but nothing more if I open the back cover maybe and close it there is toner everywhere and this thing No, no, it will not uh, turn. So we will have a look at a better look at the inside in this compartment. Okay, so about this uh, drawer for the toner cartridges, when you pull it, you really have a feeling it wants to come, but it will not come. And I had to search a little bit with a lamp and I finally found the hidden latch. It is here on the right, but you have to access it from the outside of the drawer and it is really not easy because you have to pull the plastic piece like so. And now we can remove this drawer and it will probably never go in again. So it is just a glass fiber uh, reinforced plastic piece with a sliding uh, rails on the side and also a spring to make uh, contacts for the toner cartridges as you can see. So it comes uh, in uh, make contacts in the left uh, side here. And now we can have a good look at the problem in this uh, unit. Because as you can see, if I zoom in, on this side we have uh, remains of a toner transfer belt. And on this side we have a missing part of the toner transfer belt. So in fact it looks, it is a wall unit you can replace. Probably by removing two screws here, but I did try this and there is a stupid wire loom in the way and you cannot completely uh, remove the thing so it is uh, quite complicated to do it seems you have to disconnect the wire somewhere but if you have to remove the left panel it is a pain because to remove the left panel you have to remove the top panel to remove the top panel you have to undo things at the back well it is not great um, Yes, and all at the bottom, in fact, you can see the detail of the damage. I will power it again for you with disabling the interlock, which is here, just at the top here. So you should consider the door is closed. It is turning and doing stuff, but nothing more. If I open the back cover, maybe and close it. There is toner everywhere. And this thing. No, no, it will not. Uh, Turn. So we will have a look at a better look at the inside in this compartment. Okay, I was able to access the web interface of the printer. So we can check the uh, information of the printer. We have a precise model number here, serial number. And the total amount of uh, impressions, you can see 43,227. It is quite a good number, I believe. The other infos are not interesting. But here we have the event log. And as you can see, seems the problem started here at 42,500 prints because we have already a color plane registration sensor error 
so I guess the color plane is the toner transfer belt but it seems it continue to work until uh, this uh, point where uh, it was dead because we have four errors at the same uh, page number so it is when the piece did uh, tear off probably color plane registration sensor error main motor rotation error so the finger got stuck ETB motor start error on the top sensor error and interestingly enough this uh, we have a four page register we have another event but no description here you have the numbers so maybe it will uh, allow to find uh, more information about these errors usually the, uh, uh, in this log you see only the paper jams or empty uh, toner cartridges or things like so but these are quite uh, catastrophic errors and uh, really it was the death of the printer ok let's continue with the teardown ok I hope you did enjoy my uh, little error log web surfing so now last uh, power off of this thing setting down bye bye so we have plans for the next part uh, of this uh, video series will be to try to remove all the body panels and also the front and back doors there is a lot of complicated stuff in here it must be possible to remove this door but there is there is stuff in the way so I do not know if it should be easy or not but we will, I will try at least if not a good uh, pair of pliers will allow to cut the uh, part in the way and uh, it will allow to have a first look inside I do not know how detailed I will be able to do the wall uh, teardown process because I guess we have an insane amount of parts in this thing and it should be uh, too many work so it will probably be uh, several videos with progress uh, steps and uh, after this videos with a uh, better look at some uh, parts it is uh, the easier way to me to, for me to proceed uh, for the, my, my workflow at least to make the video so it was replaced by a very nice Rico printer this thing I did not, uh, it was a good printer, uh, doing good quality job, but uh, regular problem of uh, paper jams and over expensive uh, cartridges and very low autonomy cartridges too. And not, uh, not very fast as I remember, it was not in my uh, office, but I did see it working uh, sometimes on the it was not insanely fast this thing but it had a good use at least so it is time for it to go okay see you in the next part of this video bye bye